from 2008, we did receive a consultancy from the Ministry of Finance, as well as from the World Bank, to look at our entire legal framework. Uh, as I'm sure some of you have, um, have interacted with us, as well as with our framework, and um, each of you has had one or two issues where they always say this requires an amendment, it will be better if we do it this way. So what we did is really to look at the entire legal framework and really work on benchmarking it with regards to the international best practice. So the proposed changes are really a follow-up of this work that commenced in 2008 and in 2009 the drafting started and what we are doing today is really sensitizing yourselves on the proposed changes that are there and what we believe it will be really a cutting edge legal framework that will take us to the next level of uh, regulatory reform as well as really focusing on us being a world class uh, regulator which is really what our vision is. As you know, our capital markets are really dynamic, so it's important for us to ensure that we are also responding to the times. I have heard several, several the saying that the regulator is always behind the market. But uh, with this particular framework, we believe um, there are certain provisions that will be there that will allow us to even be moving fast when, uh, when innovations are brought to our, our attention so that we can actually ensure that our market is as innovative as possible. As you recall, um, we went through a lot um, at the time of the legal framework review. That's when in 2008, the global financial crisis occurred. And also, there were certain policy uh, amendments and uh, reforms that were undertaken in 2008 and 2009 that touched on the capital markets. So this time, where we are actually sensitizing yourselves is really an opportune time for us. Because what we believe is that the market has had time to settle, absorb the, some of the shocks that have been there, as well as also determine how these uh, uh, reforms that have been there are actually fitting in in your operations. So we believe, again, this is really the opportune time for this sensitization, and we will be taking you through this particular process. As you know, the Vision 2030 uh, economic blueprint um, is really what is going to be driving um, this process. Um, the authority as well as all of us in government and even in private sector, we are really focusing on Vision 2030 in terms of everything that we are doing. And we believe the capital markets are really the key in resource mobilization as well as in also mobilizing savings uh, from investors as well as uh, the retail market. The proposed Capital Markets Authority Act will allow the authority to have access to tools to respond effectively to the market and product development demands in addition to effective investigation and enforcement due to the changing market landscape. Other benefits that we expect will be really clarifying the scope of licenses for market intermediaries, um, as well as to ensure that um, the activities that are carried out are all regulated and are really within the scope of um, the Capital Markets Authority. The changes are also expected to introduce greater transparency and efficiency in the authority's enforcement processes and enhance capacity to facilitate increased cross-border financial flows. As you know, the um, East African Common Market Protocol is with us now, and it is crucial for us to ensure that uh, we have provisions in our legal framework to determine how we will share information, how the capital will be flowing, because free movement of capital is crucial. We also believe, again, cooperation with our fellow regulators nationally and internationally is crucial because you cannot uh, look at systemic risk just from a national perspective. This has to be looked at really from a global perspective. Other key highlights include addressing potential inconsistencies between the capital markets framework and the proposed company's bill, streamlining the operation and management of the investor compensation fund, Again, uh, Permanent Secretary, I wish to just reiterate our collective investment scheme also has been a bit inconsistent in terms of the restrictions that have been there across the regulated financial sector. So this particular framework will be addressing that to ensure that there is greater consistency and also provide a regime for foreign regulated co um, collective investment schemes. The proposed changes are expected to ensure that our legal and regulatory framework also conforms to the International Organization of Securities Commission, IOSCO, in which the Capital Markets Authority is a member. 